we're right side up now yay the first time i did that i was we were upside down it was really bizarre and i would have enjoyed that perspective more if i wasn't on a schedule here so welcome it's three o'clock um california time which means it's time for a live presentation from humboldt redwood state parks because it's friday friday's at three that's when i come on so um i am super happy to show you guys this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place that's only 4.6% of the original old growth redwood forest is left. And most of it is right here in Humboldt Redwood State Park. I love it. And there's so much to discover here. So I have a confession to make. Hey, Sandra, I have a confession to make. I get off work and, and go hiking some more here. I, I discover stuff all, all day long. Cause it, I mean, there's so much to look at here. And I know you guys are all on your um, sheltering in place and stuff, but as soon as that gets lifted, you should come out here. And in the meantime, I'll be happy to show you around and show you some of my favorite discoveries. Cause if I showed you every discovery, we would just have to leave this on and be like 24 seven cam, except for when I'm asleep. Cause you don't want to see that. But 24, well, 24 minus eight cam. And you guys could go around with me when I'm not sitting in my office because that part would be boring. And you would see beautiful, beautiful, beautiful things in these state parks. Thank you to everybody who is no longer with us who worked so hard to save these, um, these parks, these humble parks like Laura Mahan and Save the Redwood League. One for heaven for you, Laura, because this place is sacred and special. Okay? So, you know what's really bizarre is sometimes I'll be walking out here. What's up, Steve? I'm right side up now. Yay. So sometimes I'm walking through here by myself and I try to stay present moment because when you're present moment is when you discover things in nature. Because a lot of us, when we go walking, a lot of times we end up like playing mental movies in our head, you know, like of the past and what we should have done or, or, or we have like soup, like these fantasies where we're the hero, you know what I'm saying? People are like, no, no, I don't do, I don't do that. Yes, you do. Or like if you're, if you're like have a lot of resentment, you're like, oh, I should have said this when they said that, blah, blah, blah. And you end up walking past flowers and butterflies and mountain lions and Tyrannosaurus rex because you're so caught up in your head that you don't see these things. So I try to be present when I'm out here and just kind of, and look at things like it's the first time I ever saw them. Okay, that's not the millionth time I've seen a rabbit tree. It's the first time. It's not the millionth time I heard that bird call. It's the first time. And so that way I could really start to differentiate stuff. So I was doing that the other day. And I made this really cool discovery. And hopefully everything's going to participate so that you can make the same discovery. Let's see how it goes. So I was walking along here. Okay. When I heard this. I wonder if you guys can hear that. Sometimes it's louder than other times. Can you guys hear that? I'm gonna keep this camera focused on this hole. So let's just get a let's just get a perspective here. This is an old growth redwood tree, okay? And inside this old growth redwood tree is a little hole, and here comes a bumblebee. That's a black-tailed bumblebee. Right on time, dude, thank you. Wow, I didn't even have to pay him to do this. He is going to fly around a little bit, decide whether or not he wants to sting me, she. All these are females. And then she's gonna go into her hive. This is, this is a, this is a bumblebee hive inside of a redwood tree, which is super, super cool find. It's an old growth redwood tree with a bumblebee colony inside of it. How super cool is that? So when I was 18, 19, I used to hike around the redwoods. Um, I won't tell you everything that I was doing because it would be inappropriate. But when I was hiking around the redwoods, if I would have found something like this, I'd have been like, it's a sign. What does it mean? It would have tripped me out because it's so amazingly beautiful that there's this old growth, huge, probably close to, you know, 800 year old tree, maybe older, that has a bumblebee colony inside of it. And not just any bumblebee, but the black-tailed bumblebee. 
So here, let me show you. So this is black, these are black tail bumblebees. So see, they've got a lot of yellow and black bands there. And I'm not 100% that's what these are. Um, they look like it when I'm comparing pictures. And I've been going to these Facebook groups like North American Native Bees Facebook group, another Facebook group, and showing them. And um, my friend Lila Higgins that works for LA Natural History Museum told me she thought it was a black-tailed bee. I didn't have great pictures. This is not my picture. This is from the internet. I didn't have great pictures because sometimes these guys don't look like that. Sometimes they look like this and they have an orange butt. Okay, so and this, that's on a blue blossom cyanothus flower, it looks like. So I was a little confused. I'm still a little confused. But this is what they look like when they're babies. Oh, isn't that sweet and cute? No, it's really not. Anyways, this was a super cool find. Now, what makes this find even more extraordinary to me is that we're going to see if we can find anybody else coming in and out. Oh, there is someone right there. Oh, we missed it. I'm sorry. Um, what makes it even more interesting is that there's only 4.6% of the old growth. Right? There's one going in. See it? There's only 4.6% of the old growth. There's not very many of these old growth trees left. They're here because we save them in parks. Thank you guys very much. For all of you who support, say, the Redwood League and California State Parks for saving these redwood trees. And, you know, bees and other insects are also in the, de in the decline. So here you have this, like rare old growth redwood tree and this insect that's in terrible decline um you know having this relationship and how this hole got into this giant redwood tree is a mystery too so i want to read you guys something real fast just because it's it's alarming okay nature needs and, and wildlife need witnesses right now so be my witness okay Worldwide, more than 40% of insect species are near extinction, and the total biomass of insects, like pounds of, of insects, put all, if you put all the insects into a box in the whole world, okay, that would be the biomass. And the total biomass of insects is decreasing by 2.5% every year, okay? And that's according to the Biological Journal of Biological Conservation. But also Xerces Society, X-E-R-C-E-S Society, X-E-R-C-E-S dot org. You should all go there. Um, they have a lot of information about bumblebee conservation and things that you can do. But what do you guys think? I'll tell you in a minute. But what do you guys think some of the reasons are for this insect decline? And why do you think that it's something we really need to pay attention to? Now, I know a lot of you guys are like alarmed out because it seems like our news is so dramatic now. And it's not really solution oriented because if it was solution oriented, you wouldn't keep watching it because you'd be like, oh, the COVID virus is solved. Okay, we don't need to watch this anymore. They want you to keep watching so they keep you hyped up. So like a lot of us that watch the news, we're just like overhyped already. In fact, I've pretty much decided the only news I'm gonna listen to from now on is the emergency broadcast system. But um, anyways, I don't wanna super alarm you out, but we are losing our insects and there is something we can do. So a lot of these things are lined out in the Xerxes Society. Xerxesociety.org lays them out really well, what you can do. But what do you guys think you could do? So let me see. I'm going to just look at these. If you guys are watching this later on, you're like, what is he doing? I'm looking at the live, the live stuff. Are you guys worried about the murder hornet? No, I'm not worried about the murder, murder hornet. That's kind of alarmist headlines. Um, they've been here since like 2012 and... Um, that's not quite as awful as it seems, but it's another invasive species. And every time we have an invasive species, it's a bummer. So what do you guys think is leading to the decline of the bumblebees? Give you some hints. Habitat conversion. So every time we mow a field and turn it into agriculture, uh, when we destroy the forest, whenever we just turn, whenever we convert nature... Okay, we'll call it nature, wildlife habitat. When I say nature, I mean like places that can support lots of different wildlife, okay, without a t ton of invasive non-native and humans. Um, when we convert nature to towns or agriculture, we get rid of the habitat, we get rid of the bees. Um, the removal of non-native species. Pesticides, especially the neonicotinoids, um, the neonicotinoids are affecting tons of wildlife, and we should ban them the way some other countries have. They are no good. Neonicotinoids, look it up. A lot of your plants that you buy from the big box retailers um, are treated with neonicotinoids, and they're poisonous for years. Okay, here comes a um, here comes a bumblebee out of this hole. Oh shoot! Don't mess up on me now. 
Here he is. You see him? Oh, I didn't get a good shot of him. Um, her. All the bumblebees are hers. So pesticides, don't use them. And, and buy organic whenever possible because organic produce means it wasn't treated with pesticides most of the time. It means that. And so you're like, oh, but it's more expensive. Look, I've been, I've been to y'all's houses before and, and looked into your refrigerator. And you had a lot of wilted spinach up in there and you had some carrots that you forgot about that looked horrible they looked more like licorice than carrots and you had like something that i thought was an eggplant but then later realized was an old avocado so you're letting a lot of your produce go to waste maybe if you paid 50 cents more for that broccoli you'd actually eat it okay because you'd be like oh i paid 50 cents more for this, bro this broccoli i should eat it and it's organic and so you didn't kill any bees you didn't put poisons out there into the air soil and water you feel better about yourself just buy organic Okay. Even Costco carries organic. So just, there's no excuse. Um, but if you can buy local farmer's market, organic, it's even better because the money stays in your community. Okay. But back to bees. So bees need your help. So you can buy organic. You can support places like say the Redwood League and North Coast Land Trust and land conservancies are buying a wildlife habitat, putting it aside for wildlife, because we definitely need to do that. We need our banks of biodiversity. And uh, support organizations like Xerces Society, X-E-R-C-E-S. Okay, here comes another, um, here comes another bumblebee. There he goes. She goes. So she doesn't look like she has a lot of pollen. So let me just talk a little bit about uh, life cycle of bumblebees. So there's a queen, she comes out of hibernation. She was the only one that survived the winter. So it's not like honeybees. Honeybees are perennial. They're around, they're year round and they can get 10,000 bees in their colonies. These guys, bumblebees in, in, in North America and honeybees are from Europe. They're not native, okay? We brought them over here. Uh, but the, bumble, um, the bumblebees that are native here, there's non-native bumblebees too. We brought them over here uh, and their little colonies for pollinization and, and they brought over diseases, which is another reason behind the bumblebee decline. In fact, one of our bump continental United States has one bumblebee on the endangered species list. I think it's called the rusty patch bumblebee. <sighs> That's depressing, huh? So what was I talking about before that? Gosh, I can't even remember when I started talking about the endangered species. Oh yeah, life cycle. So the bumblebees have like 50 to 150 uh, workers. So the queen comes out of hibernation. She looks for a, a mouse hole or something. She'll even fight things. She'll fight a mouse or, and, and to get in, get the hole or a, she'll go into a bird box or whatever. And, and she's, she, she can sting more once. Bumblebees can sting more than once. Honeybees are the only ones that sting and then their guts rip out and they die. Um, and they're also the only ones that make tons of honey. Bumblebees don't make tons of honey like that. That's why you never had bumblebee honey. So... She, the queen then gets her little hole or her hollow old growth redwood tree and she lays her eggs in, you know, five to 50 eggs in a um, wax cap with a bunch of pollen that she's collected. The larval, larva, larva hatches and then within like a month from hatching, they're worker bees. So they go through, a, I think, a, a complete metamorphosis. They, they have a larval stage, pupa stage. Oh, here comes another one. See it? Oh. And so all these worker bees were born, they're the first generation, and they're going out and collecting pollen, and they bring it back for mom, and she just chills in there all the time now and just lays eggs. And this will go on until there's a mutiny, and they kill her, and then the more queens hatch. The last ones that hatch are the queens, and they fly off and hibernate, and everybody else dies. Isn't that tragic? Isn't that just terribly tragic? So bumblebees are big and black, and people think that they're going to sting them. Bumblebees... They're attracted to certain colors. If you're wearing blue, they'll seem like they're coming after you. They're just trying to, they're just trying to get some nectar in this, you know, they're just trying to get some nectar. And they very rarely sting people. You gotta kind of make them sting you. So love your bumblebees, plant native plants. If you're not sure what plants are native, go to National Wildlife Federation, Native Plant Finder. I'm gonna put some good links for you in the post to this video. Please like and share it, especially with people who you know love redwoods and love bees. And um, no, don't do, and just know not to be afraid of these bees celebrate them they're on the decline they need you as their witness they need you as their advocate please please be that thank you guys for joining me i'm going to scroll through and look at see if you have any questions um i don't see a lot of questions all right well if i see any questions later i will come back and i will um, be in my office a little later and i will 
and I'll answer your questions. So thank you very much. I hope you guys all get a chance to come hike here or hike somewhere around your house and observe nature and be its witness and be its advocate. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.